Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Eric Handy here. Today we are back on PTCGO taking a look at some more team up decks. And well, I guess it's not entirely accurate in this specific instance just because uh, Raichu GX has actually been around for a pretty good bit amount of time now. It came out all the way back in Shining Legends. But team up and a new uh, promo card that got released in some team up product actually gives this deck a pretty big boost, uh, most notably the new Pikachu promo. So uh, we actually did open up some of those Pikachu promos on the channel as well. So if you guys are interested in maybe some pack opening videos too, I will have some links down below in the description if you guys want to watch me open up some of those blister packs. But for the deck at hand, like I said, this is going to be all about Raichu. And let's just do a quick little refresher on the card. So really, the attack we're concentrating on here is going to be the first attack, Powerful Spark for two colorless, does 20 plus 20 more for every lightning energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So we've seen attacks like this in the past be pretty pretty successful, most notably in the form of Darkrai EX. But this attack is really, I think, only as good as the quality of energy acceleration that we have at our disposal for Raichu. And luckily, we actually do have a couple of pretty important uh, ways to accelerate energy, which we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, just to go over some of the other attacks, these really aren't going to be quite as useful, and I rarely ever use them. Uh, but next up is Thunder for two lightning, and the Colorist is 160, and Raichu takes 30 damage. Definitely not very good, uh, especially when Powerful Spark can easily hit those same amounts of... Uh, damage but then also the gx attack this one is i actually think a little bit better same attack cost but it does 120 and your opponent's active is now paralyzed so auto prowess is pretty nice so if you're at a point in the game where maybe your opponent sets up a pretty beefy pokemon that you can't quite one shot you can use voltail gx just to paralyze them for a turn and hopefully ensure they can't attack back into your raichu so you can buy yourself a turn to knock them out with raichu not being attacked. But like I said, Powerful Spark is by and large going to be the main focus of the deck here. Uh, but also too, like I said, there is a new promo Pikachu. This is very important. This is honestly, I think the entire reason this deck has a chance at actually, you know, being half decent. So this Pikachu, you know, just looking at it has this attack nuzzle paralysis on a coin flip, Thunder Jolt's also kind of underwhelming. So you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? Uh, but the fact that this thing has Nuzzle is actually really big because we have the old Pachirisu from Ultra Prism, I believe it is, which we'll get to, which accelerates energy to Pokemon with Nuzzle. So after the rotation last summer, we lost the only Nuzzle Pikachu we had at our disposal, and uh, you know we didn't really have a great way at getting Raichu powered up anymore. So the fact that we finally have another Nuzzle Pikachu is huge for this deck. Uh, like I mentioned, we do have Patch Risu. This is going to be the main way we are accelerating energy. So like I said, for each of your bench Pokemon that has the Nuzzle attack, search your deck for a Lightning Energy, attach it to that Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. So ideally, we want to get five Pokemon with Nuzzle on the bench so we can immediately search out five energy. That's basically a plus 100 damage for Raichu. So if you get off two Snuggly Generators on your first two turns, uh, you actually usually set your board up in a position where you can basically one-shot anything your opponent has, which is really, really nice. And another key card that Team Up is giving us that really gives this deck a big boost is going to be the new Amolga. So Amolga has this ability, you can search your deck for a Pokemon with Nuzzle, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So this is pretty powerful because if we just search out one Amolga, we can actually set up our entire bench just off that single copy of Amolga, which is really nice. It's such a huge consistency booster for this deck. Another thing I like about it, it has free retreat, so uh, we can actually, we have decent odds of starting with this if we don't start with our Pachirisu, which is nice because Amolga can search out Pachirisu and freely retreat into it. So like I said, another huge boost that this deck actually got with Amolga. Uh, from there, we have one copy of Dedenne. Also, this has Nuzzle, but this is kind of more of like a tech Pokemon. We're not going to use it in most matchups, but the reason we're looking at this is for Nuzzle Shot. For our Lightning, does 10 to, well, 10 for each of the amount of Pokemon with Nuzzle to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So this is actually going to be ideally for stuff like Lost March. Uh, the reason why we're kind of playing this in preparation of Lost March is because 210 is a pretty easy number for them to hit. And if we can put on some early pressure with the Dene and sniping some Hoppips and things like that before our opponent can really get going, uh, that can potentially maybe give us 
you know, some wiggle room to keep their their damage output right where we need it to prevent us from being knocked out in one hit. So it's mainly a Lost March tech in this particular list. And then from there, we just have one copy of Tapu Koko Prism Star. This is our only uh, non-nuzzle Pokemon in the deck. And of course, we're just playing this for this ability. If you guys aren't familiar with Tapu Koko Prism Star, uh, if it's on your bench, you may choose two of your bench Pokemon and you can attach a lightning energy from your discard pile to each of them and then discard all cards attached to Tapu Koko and put it into the Lost Zone. So it's nice in the mid game, whenever we lose a Raichu, we can keep that energy in play. We also run EXP shares. So between those and the Tapu Koko Prism Star, we have plenty of ways of keeping our energy in play to ensure that we can keep taking one hit knockouts. So that's going to be it for the Pokemon line, guys. If you'll notice, we play zero copies of Tapu Lele GX, zero copies of Marshadow or any other support Pokemon. And that looks really weird at a glance, but we really need a full bench full of Nuzzle Pokemon to really get the most value out of a uh, Snuggly Generator. Also, Amolga sets up our entire bench for us, so we don't need anything like Elm's Lecture, which means we don't need Tapu Lele to search that out either. So going on to our support account, this is definitely an, a more unorthodox supporter count I've been playing around with, but I think this is definitely better than uh, playing like a high count of Elms or Lilies or anything like that. So of course we have four Cynthia, just our most solid draw supporter we have in the current format. We have two Erica's Hospitality. Definitely like this over Lily too in this deck because we usually have a pretty full hand with this deck. So getting your hand low enough to actually make good use of Lily is a little bit difficult. So Erica's I think is definitely gonna be better I also actually think there's a consideration uh, to be made for playing Sophocles in this deck because a lot of times in the mid to late game, we have extra copies of some of our Nuzzle Pokemon, like our extra Amolgas and Pachirisus. So I actually think there's a case to be made to play Sophocles over this as well. But uh, right now I'm trying out Erica. It's just a nice solid draw supporter. And then from there, we have four copies of Looker. <laughs> this is where things get a little weirder. So we draw three from the bottom of our deck. The reason we're playing this over how, of course, is because we have Looker Whistle. So we can search these things out and thin our deck out uh, a little bit better as well. So the reason we're playing this, like I said, is we normally have a pretty full hand because a lot of times after turn two, you usually want to search out your extra nuzzle Pokemon, like your excess Amolgas, your excess Pachirisus, etc., and you want to thin them out of the deck. So a lot of times it's hard to make good use of Lily, and even in some cases it's kind of hard to use Erica on certain turns as well. So just having straight draw I think is actually going to be better here, and like I said, that is one reason I'm kind of thinking about Sophocles, maybe replacing Erica for that as well. So I think straight draw options are definitely going to be the best in this type of deck outside of our copies of Cynthia. And then from there, just three copies of Guzma. Of course, choose what we want to take knockouts on. So going to our item cards, not a whole lot. We play three Nest Ball. We really, you know, even though we don't play Elms or anything like that, I think some people might be tempted to play four, but we really only need to play Nest Ball like once in the course of a game. Uh, just because like I said, Amolga sets up our entire bench for us. We don't need a whole lot of ball search in this deck. Uh, but we are playing four copies of Pokemon Communication. So another card that we saw got reprinted in Team Up. So this is really nice in this deck because we have Amolga. Especially in the mid game, once we're hunting for our Raichus, we can use Amolga's ability to search out an excess, you know, extra nuzzle Pokemon we don't need anymore. Then use Pokemon Communication to put it back into our deck and search out Raichu in its place. So really, really nice in conjunction with Amolga here. Uh, then from there, we have two copies of Choice Band just to increase our damage output a little bit more, and three copies of EXP Share as well. So EXP Share, definitely nice at helping preserve our energy in play. I think you could potentially play something like Wishful Baton, but I wanted to play Choice Band still in the deck, so that kind of makes Wishful Baton a little bit worse here. So EXP Share, whenever your active is knocked out, you may move one basic energy from that Pokemon to the Pokemon that EXP Share is attached to. So we can throw these down on things like Amolgas or Pachirisus. That way, whenever our Raichus get knocked out, they kind of siphon those energies and keep them in play to ensure we can keep doing ideally large amounts of damage. And then there for, from our Stadium cards, we have one copy of Thunder Mountain, uh, just to reduce our uh, you know attack costs. And actually, I have to be honest, Thunder Mountain is not the greatest in this deck, but we really do, I think, need a counter stadium. And the reason I say Thunder Mountain is not that great is because we already have 
a good bit of energy acceleration, finding energy to attack with is usually not an issue. And also, a powerful spark doesn't actually get any benefit from Thunder Mountain because Thunder Mountain only reduces attack cost for actual lightning energy, not colorless energy. But nevertheless, it still allows us to use Raichu's other attacks a little bit more flexibly, which is nice. Also, if we are fortunate enough to start with it, we can you know, use Pachirisu's attack for free and not having to commit an energy to it is going to be something that's pretty nice, I think. So... It doesn't get as much value here as in other decks, but with all the Prism Star stadiums running around, I definitely think we need some sort of copy, uh, some sort of decent stadium for this deck. So Thunder Mountain, it, it's it's half decent here, but the other one I'm actually liking a little bit more is going to be Wonder Labyrinth here, or Wondrous Labyrinth. I keep uh, forgetting the the English name. I'm, I'm so used to the Japanese name, but it makes the attack cost of non-fairy Pokemon cost one more. And you might be thinking, well, that's kind of bad because Raichu is going to have to need more energy to attack with. But it's usually not an issue after a Snuggly Generator or two. You already have all the energy you really want to attack with anyways. So from there, all you need to do is find one single Lightning Energy and you're good to go. So this is another tech kind of for some of the single attachment basic decks like uh, Lost March, like Zapdos, even things like Baby Buzzwell, which can definitely be a pain for Raichu here, or uh, Passimian, things like that. So there's a number of different decks Wondrous Labyrinth is good against. And like I said, the extra energy attachment for us really isn't a big thing to get around. So I've really been liking this in the deck so far. And then from, from there, we have 14 Lightning Energy just to round out the list. It is a good bit, but, you know, we you have to figure we're going to prize some copies of our energies to begin with, even if, even if we ran closer to, like, 12 or something. So we really just want to make sure we can always hit them off Snuggly Generator and that we're going to have enough energy to knock out even some of those huge new tag team Pokemon as well. So that's why we're playing kind of the higher count of them in here. Oh, and I did forget to mention, we do play two copies of Looker Whistle. Did forget about that. So like I said, this is the reason we're playing uh, Looker instead of how uh, Looker Whistle will allow us to search our decks for two Lookers, which is pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is going to be our look at Raichu GX. Uh, Raichu is definitely one of my personal favorite Pokemon. So I knew as soon as that Nuzzle Pikachu dropped, I wanted to get some games in with this to see how it looks in today's format. So let's head over into the battle portion of the video, and I'll show you how this deck looks in action. All right, guys, just hopping into a game now. So our opponent has a colorless deck box and a Rowlet coin. <laughs> I don't know really how much information we're going to get off of that, so we'll just have to really see what our opponent's going to have. And, okay, this is actually a pretty good little opening hand right here. You know, we have the Emolga, which is probably our best starter in the entire deck, actually. And so we should be able to chain a few of those, use Looker, draw some cards, get down a Pikachu this turn. We're going to be in good shape. But here, we're going against Granbull. Now, that actually could be a little bit tricky for us, because unfortunately Raichu... Its HP really isn't great in terms of the math against the Scramble deck. So what I mean by that is they're going to be hitting for 160. For the Choice Band, they're going to be hitting for 190. Shrine of Punishment is going to be 200. And then if we don't have one of our two stadiums to bump Shrine of Punishment, going back into our turn, our Raichus actually get knocked out. So this is, uh, you know, I I'm very pessimistic <laughs> about uh, our chances here. But you know what? We're going to see what we can make happen. And it's kind of annoying too that Snubble has 70 HP. Otherwise, I wouldn't mind even just going for like the Dene here and just putting on some early pressure, picking off Snubble's But Unfortunately, that is not the case. So we're just going to grab ourselves a few Amolgas here. We're going to go for their Nuzzly Gathering. And I guess we get Pachirisu here. So that's fine. And we're going to look her first, I think. Okay, that's kind of annoying. I really wanted another basic just in case our... Like, just in case our Pikachu gets knocked out. But, you know, we're going to have to just make do with what we have. But, uh, nevertheless, we do have the turn one Snuggly Generator. This is definitely kind of an ideal first turn. And even though we don't have a draw supporter, we can thin some cards out of our deck a good bit here. So, like I said, though, we just have to really hope that our opponent doesn't have a Guzma. And here you can see they found the Shrine of Punishment. Kind of annoying. Huh. 
So what do we do? I mean, we do have the Wondrous Labyrinth, but we're in a in a weird spot where our Raichu actually can't even attack still if we do get Raichu out, if we put down the Wondrous Labyrinth. So that feels pretty bad here. Our punch is going to do 30. Okay, that's actually pretty big because now we can, I think, safely afford to actually attack uh, with Snuggly Generator again this turn. So here we'll do... Yeah, Nuzzly Gathering. Definitely want to grab ourselves another Pikachu here, just in case of a Guzma. And here, we're going to use Nuzzly Gathering again, just thinning some more Pokemon out of the deck. That way we can increase our odds of hitting a Draw Supporter on our next turn. Uh, here we'll just grab, yet again, I guess another Pikachu. Doesn't really matter too much. We always have these back of Amolgus if we want to search out a, a patch of Risu or something. But here we're going to get down a Lightning Energy and then just go for... Yeah, sure, we'll put down the Choice Fan, why not? Doesn't really make too much of a difference, I don't think, just because, uh, you know, the Granable decks typically don't play any GXs or anything like that, but just in case of some sort of hand disruption, I don't even know if Granable decks typically play any, typically they don't, but you never know, they could play a Marshadow or something like that. Also, if they play Blower, this could potentially uh, kind of tempt our opponent to just go ahead and make use of that Field Blower. Um, you know, maybe preserving our access to our EXP shares. Okay, and they do have the field blower here. So I really don't mind this at all. Uh, and like I said, in the late game, our EXP shares will still be safe since they've already used their field blower. And more than likely, this is the only one they play. So we're going to see Acrobike. It's actually kind of interesting. I feel like Granville decks typically don't play Acrobike as well. Let's see how it works out for our opponent. They do finally set up their Mag Cargo here. We're going to see an Apricorn Maker. Okay, so more than likely, Little Pachirisu is going to be knocked out this turn. So we're going to see a Nest Ball grabbing a Ditto. Okay. Hmm. That's actually kind of interesting. We could even try to pick off Ditto here with our Dedene, because our opponent doesn't know we play the Dedene just yet. And here we are going to see a smooth over. So, hmm. Our opponent only has a single Oranguru in play here. So I'm just trying to think, what do we do? I'm kind of tempted to actually just Guzma and KO this Oranguru. That, that seems kind of decent. But at the same time, like if we go for the Dedene, we could get an easy prize on Ditto. And also maybe strand this Mag Cargo. Well, even if we do that, they can just smooth over Guzma, so that seems pretty bad. So we're going to do that. Yeah, I think we're just going to tap a Raichu. So here we just put back, I guess, the Emolga. I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Maybe Pichu. Either one is completely fine, I think, at this point. So yeah, we just go for that. And so we can knock out Gramble here. Or we can Guzma KO this Oranger. I think that's good as well. Or even my target. There's a lot of different targets that we have here that would be good for us. But, hmm. I I think I want to go for the Oranger because if... Oranger is kind of like the heart and soul of the deck. Even though my cargo is incredibly important. You know, being able to, uh, you know, draw that card that they smooth over every time is going to be a little bit more important. So... We're going to try to take this thing out of play, make it so where our opponent is going to have to struggle a little bit to, uh, you know, get their, you know, combo off every turn. So if you guys aren't too familiar with that Gramble card too, it's first attack, it's for a single fairy, does 30, but then if you have a zero card hand, does 130 more. So we're going to get a Nest Ball, not too great at this point, though we could get a Tapu Koko Prism Star if this uh, Raichu does go down this turn. Uh, and here they do have another Oranger. That's actually pretty terrible. Uh, I was thinking, you know, if we could buy a turn where they don't have this Oranger and have to just kind of like struggle to uh, attack us, then I kind of like the shape that we're going to be in here. Here we're going to see an Adventure Bag. Okay. EXP share. That's very interesting. You usually don't see that in and these Grand Bull decks. But here they're going to get one down on Oranguru. Okay, that actually could be slightly annoying because, you know, Oranguru does 60 plus 20 more for every energy that we have on our active. And, you know, we are going to be... We're going to have 2 to 3 energy on our active at all times. So this actually could kind of pick, pick us off at some point. 
Okay, that's actually a really good top deck. So here we're gonna get communication. We're gonna put this Patrice back, grab another Raichu. And we have to retreat this turn because uh, right now this Raichu is in one shot range of a Grand Bull. So we're just gonna do that and go for a Cynthia here. Alrighty, so we have EXP share. I think I wanna throw it down on this Pikachu. That seems pretty good. Uh, like I said, choice ban, not gonna be too good in this matchup. So. Uh, there's not really any tools we would prefer in, in place of that EXP share. So here we're gonna use Nuzzle Gathering, just thinning cards out of the deck just to make sure we don't top deck uh, back into these things. And we'll grab another Pachirisu. And we can grab the, yeah, we'll grab Pachirisu again. So you guys can kind of see what I meant earlier in the deck profile about how Lily isn't that great in this deck because your hands typically look like this. <laughs> So here we are going to take knockout on this Grand Bull. So that's definitely good. So our opponent is going to need to find themselves a Grand Bull and energy. And uh, Shrine of Punishment, they're also gonna want that, of course. But we do have Guzman in hand, so we could even pick off something next turn if we are going to choose to. So I'm trying to think if they go for a Diantha, that actually could be bad because they could go for... Well, it depends if they have energy and discard already. If they have energy and discard, Diantha seems pretty good here. Here they're going to get down a Snubble, and they do have the Shrine. That's pretty annoying, and they have the Diantha. So no doubt we're going to see just Gramble and energy here. So definitely a good turn from our opponent, and we desperately need to find our... Uh, Thunder Mountain this turn, otherwise we are just going to be in absolutely terrible shape here because this Raichu is going to go down to 200 damage coming back into our turn here. So yeah, we desperately need to find that. Um, so here we just, well yeah, we need to thin this Dedenne out of our deck really quick just to increase our odds. So let's see what we can make happen. We do have Guzma, but yeah, I think we need to try to hit our Thunder Mountain here. Let's see, uh, and unfortunately, we do not hit it. So, I guess we just... We definitely don't evolve this Pikachu on the bench, because they'll start accruing Shrine damage. I want to evolve into it whenever we are ready to start attacking with it, just prevent it from racking up excess damage. Uh, so... Yeah, I guess we just go for a powerful spark. It kind of feels bad because our opponent is going to get a prize going back into their turn, and then they can take another prize on their turn as well. So that feels really, really bad for us here. And that's how the Raichu is going to keep accruing damage. So I guess we'll just promote this Amolga. It has the least amount of energy other than our Pikachu, but again, we want to save that because we're going to need a fresh Raichu to attack into a Gramble. So we're going to see Acrobite getting rid of a switch. Okay. So we're going to see a, a Snubble. So let's see what they're going to go for. They need Grainbull and an Energy still. Or actually, they could have even potentially have attacked with a Rangaroo. Uh, I mean, they probably want to keep a Rangaroo safe, but they did have the option. But probably not worth it just to knock out an Amolga. And they have it, okay. And they're gonna smooth over yet again, controlling their top deck. I imagine maybe another Diantha, that could be good for them. Uh, luckily we do get to get this energy down on this Pikachu, that's pretty big here. So here we're gonna promote this Amolga. And okay, so we have Nest Ball, let's go ahead and burn these. Okay, so we don't have anything there, we can burn the other nest ball so we get down Raichu well hmm yeah I guess we do I'm trying to think what do we do here maybe we can look her first and kind of decide what we want to do from there okay that's actually pretty big we get the Thunder Mountain so we'll go for looker whistle we have none left in deck that's fine just gonna burn these nest balls. We don't really want to see these for the rest of the game at this point. 
So we can get down this to Dene. This could be, we might need it as an alternate attacker, uh, especially if our Raichu gets attacked into on this next turn, then we're going to need to retreat into something. And the Dene will be able to hopefully do the job here. Uh, but we lose to a Guzma at this point either way, so I don't know how relevant it's really going to be. So I guess we'll do EXP share on the damaged Raichu, that's fine. Just in case our opponent has like a Wonder Labyrinth of their own or something like that, uh, that could be good to maybe ensure that we can attack through it. So here we're just going to go for a powerful spark, taking a knockout on this Grand Bull. And we really need our opponent to whiff a KO on one of these next turns. Otherwise, we're going to be in bad shape because I think they are just a little bit ahead in the prize exchange. That Raichu getting knocked out, going back into their turn, really, really big. Uh, but luckily, we do have a fresh Raichu. They don't have Shrine of Punishment right now. They don't have Choice Bands. So uh, right now, I don't think our opponent is really threatening to uh, pull off the same type of thing they did on that other Raichu earlier. So we are going to see a Gramble. Okay, it's a good start for them. Do they have an energy? Or if they have another Diantha, I would have imagined maybe we saw them smooth over for that. Okay, we're going to see a smooth over, so let's see what they're going to get. Diantha is maybe one of the only things I can really think of because they can guarantee energy. Oh, and just a pass. That's actually pretty big, I have to say. So if that's the case, we are definitely, definitely going to Guzma this Oranguru here. Uh, so yeah, big whiff from our opponent. That's exactly what we needed, actually. So here we'll get down another energy on Raichu, I think, just in case if our opponent does have their own Wonder Labyrinth. We'll do that. And then we'll just Powerful Spark for the knockout. So we get the well played from our opponent. So this turn, they need the Guzma KO on this Raichu on the bench. Uh, otherwise, we just win. Uh, they can't Guzma stall anything. We have Guzma in hand. Everything has free retreat or a one retreat cost. So I think that's going to be the game. So we're going to see energy recycle system that can at least get them the energy back into their hand. But without a Rangaroo, they're really not in any position to... Uh, you know, pull off any crazy combo. If they have the Guzma and another burnable card in hand, they can make it happen, but that's the only way our opponent is going to be able to pull this one out here. So they have energy, that's a good start, but like I said, they need a good bit more here. And here we just get the victory screen, awesome. So yeah, we got uh, very fortunate enough, our opponent did finally whiff uh, one of their combo pieces. So we're going to hop into another game though, see what we can make happen. Uh, here we see a Dawnwings deck box, so could be Malamar. And ooh, this hand is not that great, unfortunately. I mean, I shouldn't say it's not that great, but our starter is a little bit unfortunate. Um, you know, it's not Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is definitely the worst starter in the deck. But on the plus side, we are going first. That's going to be pretty big here. So here we can go for an Emolga. We can communication this Tapu Koko and I think we just go for another Amolga so now we can start chaining these things Nuzzle Gathering we grab Pachirisu yeah I kind of only want to keep two Amolgas in play at a time though I'm really not sure what Malamar variant this is going to be but if this is Ultra Necrozma I think we are going to get absolutely eviscerated this game uh, just because it has Sky Scorching Light GX, which can do 60 to all of our uh, Pokemon. So if we ever have three Amolgas in play at a time, it's going to be an easy three prizes for at some point in the game here. So we're just going to go for a Cynthia here, refresh our hand. Okay, we do hit energy. That's actually pretty important because we're going to need to be able to retreat on our next turn into this Pachirisu. So here we're going to... Yeah, we just attached to Pachirisu, I think, or... You know what? Actually, we could have even attached to Pichu. I think actually that might have been better in hindsight because that gives us the flexibility of attacking into this NK to knock it out on our next turn if we choose to as well. So, you know, that might be a little bit of a misplay. You know, Cyber Generator is going to be what we want to go for throughout, uh, you know, the majority of our games on the first turn. But here, I definitely think 
that would have been a consideration. But here if our opponent just uses invasion anyways, it won't really make too much of a difference. So they are going to use that Viridian Forest. That'll allow them to discard a card from their hand, search their deck for a basic energy. That could be good for us as well. To search out an energy on this next turn if we somehow can't find one of the 13 energy uh, left in our deck here. Uh, it's also pretty cool because we can search out some of our like extra Molgas and stuff like that and burn them with the Viridian Forest. That seems pretty cool actually. We will probably do that. <laughs> so we're gonna see another Inke hit the bench. Getting rid of a Marsh Shadow, I am fine with that. Kind of, kind of do like this hand. So let's see what else do they have. I mean, they have a couple Inkes. That's really what they want on their first turn, ideally. If they can find a third one. That would be even better, of course. So we're seeing an Ultra Ball. Um, let's see what our opponent is going to get rid of. Looks like a Giratina, I think that was. That's pretty good. And a Psychic Energy. That's like perfect. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is a pretty strong opening from our opponent as well. And another Necrozma. Okay, so that kind of tells me this is probably not Ultra. This is probably the standard Psychic Malamar deck with Mars Shadow and things like that. And if that's the case, that's actually pretty scary for us because, of course, we are weak to fighting in this deck. But here, we're going to use Nuzly Gathering and what we can do we can discard it with that Viridian Forest and get one of these Lightning Energies. So that's pretty good for us because we typically have a lot of these excess Nuzzle Pokemon in the deck uh, left over throughout the course of a game. So here we can yeah we'll communication back the Cocoa Prism and we will just go for another Pikachu here I think and yeah, we will nuzzle gather. gathering again. Search out a Pachirisu, that's fine. And here we're just going to Erika's. Nice. And now I think we're at a point where we can... Let's see. Yeah, there we have a Marsh Shadow in the discard pile. And here we're just going to go for a Snuggly Generator, I think. So I'm just kind of hesitant about playing these extra copies of Looker Whistle just because we know uh, these Tapaleo decks, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Tapaleo, these uh, Malamar decks typically play one to two copies of Marsh Shadow. So I kind of want to hang on to the, the Looker Whistle in case our opponent plays two, since that does happen. And if we play the Looker Whistle just thin the Lookers out of our deck, well, that's going to eliminate our chances of drawing back into a way to draw cards if our opponent does have a Marsh Shadow. So I want to kind of hang on to it here. Here we're going to see a Rescue Stretcher. They actually could be going for that Marsh I was just talking about. Yep. So this is kind of what I was talking about. I didn't want to burn the Looker Whistle because now our hand's going to get reset to four. And I want higher odds of hitting an actual draw supporter. Or in the case of Looker Whistle, a way to find a draw supporter after this Marsh Shadow. So let's see. Okay. So that's a pretty good little hand here. We're going to see an Acrobike. So our opponent's hitting pretty good targets off all these Acrobikes and Ultra Balls. I don't think I've seen them get rid of one kind of like suboptimal thing. It's been Energy and Giratina like every time it seems like. So here they're going to thin out yet again. Another Energy attach for turn. And here we're going to see our poor little Pachirisu get knocked out. But it's okay. We do have an EXP share in play as well. And actually I think we might be able to knock this thing out. Let's see. So we're going to get the energy back into place. That's 20, 40, 60, 80, 120, 40, 60 for turn. And we have one in discard. So, okay, yeah, I think what we do, so we could attach, but I think what I want to do here is I want to thin. Yeah, we're going to go for Nest Ball, because what we can do here, we can actually get Tapu Koko Prism Star, we can use Viridian Forest to discard a Lightning and search out a Lightning. And then, so that allows to get three energy into play, which will definitely be enough to knock out this, um, uh, to knock out this Dawn Wings this turn. Now, the only thing from here is we do need to find ourselves a Raichu GX. Luckily, all four are in the deck. But here, we'll just go ahead and attach. And 
revenge. Sure, yeah, we can do this. Uh, you know, we kind of want to make sure that we have our Raichu first, but this way we still get extra energy in play and we can actually use Nuzzly Gathering to thin some more cards out of the deck before we play this Cynthia. So we can just go for... Uh, we'll just go for a patch of Risu, that's fine. I kind of want to go for a Dedenne in a way, but I want to save that just in case of maybe being able to catch them off guard with it at some point. So in case we ever need to take like one last knockout on a uh, Inkay or something like that, we'll, we'll have that element of surprise at our disposal. Nice, and we do find ourselves a Raichu, we'll Nuzzle Gathering again though, just thinning some more cards out of the deck, that way we don't top deck into them on our next turn. Grabbing Pikachu. Like I said, I want to usually leave this to Dene in the deck because it's not a card you typically see. And if your opponent knows you have access to it at any time, they could potentially try to play around it or might prioritize finding Malamars over, you know, other things that they might want to search out. So here we're just going to do 200 and knock out this Dominic's Necrozma. And here we're going to see a Mars Shadow come up. The only thing that I don't like about this is now we have Dominic's in the discard. And if our opponent is playing Marshadow GX, which most likely they are, now they can potentially make use of that GX attack to knock out a Raichu with uh, Marshadow at the same time. Okay, but here they're going to have to bench a Lele. I'm actually completely fine by that. So here they're going to go for a Cynthia, okay. So no doubt they're going to be looking for another... Malamar and an energy to attach to this Necrozma GX. Because they are going to need three energies for Prismatic Burst to take a knockout on us. Or actually, I think they might even need four because I think it's 10 plus 60 for every energy that they discard. So actually, they would be a little short unless they had Choice Band. So they're going to need two Malamars and an attachment. So I actually feel pretty good about where we're at right now. Here they are going to start powering up Necrozma. Let's see what they're going to do here. Okay, they're going to attach. We're going to see an Ultra Ball discarding another Necrozma and a Guzma, okay? Now, like I said, they are going to need another Malamar here. Or unless it's 10 plus 70. Oh, and yeah, it looks like they are just going all in and <laughs> taking out this Raichu, playing themselves down to a zero card hand. So that's slightly stressful. <laughs> Now, the good thing about this, though, is that after we knock out this Necrozma, they're only going to be playing off their top deck and these two prizes. So if they don't actually hit a draw supporter, we're going to be in a good shape to potentially just roll over them. But that's a little unfortunate. They did find the two Malamars and the attachment. Uh, you can see EXP share really kind of coming in handy here, preserving our energy in play. And here we have a Looker Whistle. So yeah, we'll grab both of those. And we have both Stadiums. We have two Guzmas left as well. So, so we'll use Viridian Forest. Just thinning some cards here out of our deck a little bit more. We we'll use Nuzzly Gathering. Grabbing Dedenne. I'm really not too concerned about it at this point. From here, basically, I just want to set up to where we can find a Guzma. For the next turn to Guzma up this Lele. That's ideally what we're going to be going for. So we're going to attach to little Pikachu there. Evolve into Raichu. And we're going to Looker as well. Okay, so yeah, I guess we can play down the Thunder Mountain. That's fine by me. Really, really just need to find Guzma here. We do have one prized as well. So between our top deck, between our two prizes, if we can find that, we're going to be in good shape. Um, you know, assuming our opponent has a way to retaliate. You know, if they don't find another attacker off those two prizes and their top deck, then I think we're going to be in good shape here. Here we get the well played from our opponent. So maybe they don't actually have much going on here. Oh, and they do have Mars Shadow. That's, yep, that's pretty bad. We can definitely lose that way. <laughs> oh god, this is terrible because now we're in a, a spot where they're going to go down to one prize. So we can't even like sacrifice a Nuzzler at this point. We literally have to hit Guzma 
off this top deck. We did not hit it off of our prizes, but we have two left in deck. Let's see what we can make happen. So we're going to just get all the energy down there. And just promote the world's uh, most powered up Amolga. <laughs> and that is not Guzma, so uh, that, that's really terrible. And I'm pretty sure Marshadow prevents status conditions as well. Otherwise, we would just go for Nuzzle here. <laughs> so yeah, we have no more Nest Ball targets. We did not get Guzma, so... I guess we'll throw down the Dene and... <laughs> Let's see. Just double checking. Yeah, we really don't have much of anything going on here. So, we're just going to use Nuzzle Shot and be 10 short of knocking out a Mar Shadow. <laughs> so, yeah, that game was a little bit heartbreaking, especially because their opponent played themselves down to a zero card hand and hit exactly what they needed, and we whiffed what we needed off all of our draws there on that last turn. So unfortunately, our opponent is going to take the game, and they do have the Guzma as well. They want to, I guess, take out a little Pikachu. That's fine by me. So nevertheless, pretty close game though. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, it, we did not find ourselves any of our three Guzmas between our prizes and top deck, but it's just how it goes sometimes. It happens to the best of us, but uh, nevertheless, the deck's still kind of set up. You got to see how it works there, but I really don't want to end this video on a loss So we're gonna hop into yet again one more game and see if we can kind of turn our luck around here See what we can make happen So your opponent is gonna call the coin flip and they do have a psychic coin um, You know that could mean this could be another Malamar deck. So we could potentially get revenge here <laughs> Oh, man, where do you deck? What are you doing to me? Why? Now the good thing is Tap Coco does have a one retreat cost, but this is by far and away the worst starter in the deck. You now we play four Amolgas, I think, uh, three Pachirisu, four Pikachus, so we have plenty of other, uh, you know, starter Pokemon. The odds are against us to actually start with this thing, but yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see what happens here. Very curious to see what we're going against. Our opponent has some Mega Gengar sleeves, so this even could be like Gengar Mimikyu, like Malamar or something like that, potentially. Yes, we would like to draw a card. Interesting. So we see a Mr. Mime on the bench. We see a Mimikyu. Mimikyu, not too relevant in this matchup for us. So this is going to be a Gengar Mimikyu deck. So I'm also expecting to see some uh, in case hit the board at some point as well. So just an attachment. That's actually fine by me. And we do have Nest Ball. So certainly we're going to start grabbing ourselves some Amolgas here. Just gonna go for Nuzzly Gathering. Start searching out these Amolgas out of the deck. And just trying to think. Are we gonna go for a Guzma this turn? I think that's like a potential option. Because I'm half tempted literally just to not even get out Pikachu this turn and just get out Pachirisu and like Guzma and start using Snugly Generator, but I think we're gonna play it safe here. We're gonna attach to Pikachu and we're just gonna go for a Cynthia here. Okay, so that's not too bad. We do get a Pokemon Communication. So we can get rid of that. We can grab ourselves another Pikachu. Not really too worried about uh, Pachirisu just because we can search it out at any point with these Amolgas and I guess we're just gonna pass we could get down the choice band but if our opponent attacks us with Gengar either way uh, this Tapu Koko gets knocked out no matter what so it really doesn't matter in terms of the math just because Poltergeist is gonna do 50 for every trainer card in our hand which feels pretty bad oh but they are gonna go for Whorehouse GX so I am gonna get to draw some extra cards I'm fine by that but the big thing with the attack is I can't play cards from my hand which is Pretty annoying. So basically my opponent's gonna get a free turn. Um, at, at the very least, I can search out some more Pokemon just to deck thin a little bit here. That is kind of nice about this. But uh, unfortunately, other than that, we don't have too much we can really do. 
So this turn, I would imagine we are going to see a Poltergeist knock out this Tapu Koko. Even if they knock out Pikachu, really not too worried about it just because we have another one in play. We're going to start going for Snuggly Generators first. So I actually think we can afford to lose some Pikachus if need be. But here, opponent is just going to go for a Cynthia. So that tells me they are going to knock out this Coco here. But again, it's kind of fine by me. You know, it's not a card we want to lose, but uh, I think we'll be okay. We run enough energy and we have EXP shares to where we should be able to knock out these Gengar Mimikyu's pretty, pretty soundly. And kind of interesting, our opponent is starting to power up a Mimikyu on the bench. Uh, knock yourself out, my man. That's not going to do you too much good here, unfortunately. Just because I'm pretty sure they don't play any lightning energy of their own, so... Alrighty, so here we're going to get down Pachirisu, we're going to get down another Pikachu. We're definitely going to attach to Pachirisu. And so we have Nuzzly Gathering. Going to get that into our hand. Going to get out, I guess, uh, another Pikachu. That's fine by me. The target at this point really doesn't matter too much. We're basically just trying to thin. And then from there we can... Yeah, I guess we can do that. That's fine. And we'll just look her now. Alrighty, and we'll retreat into Patrisu and start using Snuggly Generator. Finally starting to set up a little bit here. So, really curious what exactly we're going against, because we haven't seen any Inkes, so we're probably not going to see things like Giratina or Eevee Snorlax alongside this. This looks kind of like just like a straight Psychic Attachment deck. Uh, you know, no energy acceleration that I'm aware of. So I'm very curious if there's any other attackers we're going to have to get through after we take out this Gengar Mimikyu. And Sabrina's suggestion, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh man, that's definitely not a card I expected to get used against me. So it lets them look at our hand and they get to choose a supporter we have there and use it as the effect of their supporter. Okay, here they are going to get a Choice Band down. They're going to use Poltergeist, knocking out our... Pachirisu. So just trying to do some quick math right now. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60. Yeah, we'll be at 190 this turn if we start attacking with our Raichu GX. So I think we have to just snugly generator yet again here. We'll get this choice band down on Pikachu and we're just going to Cynthia. I want to put these lightning energies back into our deck. That way we can use snugly generator to get them in play. And we have another EXP share. That's fine by me. And even though we don't have a draw supporter for the next turn, we're actually, I think we have a, actually have a pretty good hand ready to go for next turn. So we just have three lightning energy. Unfortunately, we still drew back into some of those energies we wanted to put back. And here, I think we just put another energy on, hmm. I don't know how much it's gonna matter we're gonna do it on the Pikachu though but here we have Wonder Labyrinth on next turn and especially if this is a deck that's built like entirely around manual attachments uh, Wonder Labyrinth actually could be pretty impactful here against this Gengar Mimikyu deck so here we're just gonna see a Poltergeist that is fine we're gonna be able to keep that energy in play though which is also really big for us and now we're in a spot where we can start knocking out everything. Oh, you know, I just did remember we did forget to use Nuzzly Gathering uh, before we ended our turn. That actually is pretty relevant just because we have a dead hand. So that's definitely a little bit of a misplay on my part, guys. I do apologize about that. Luckily, we have basically what we need in our hand anyways. But um, yeah, typically you want to Nuzzly Gathering at the end of every turn to ensure that you always send these excess cards out of your deck. So sometimes I guess you just forget it's hard keeping up with it every single turn I suppose <laughs> but um, yeah so here what we're gonna do we'll get this wondrous labyrinth in play and I guess we can well, let's just do some math here 20 40 60 80 100 20 40 60 80 100 yeah so we are good to knock out this this Gengar I'm just trying to think which Pikachu I want to evolve into but here I want to keep the Pikachu choice band on the bench just because we actually don't need it right now. So here we're gonna go for a powerful spark, doing 260 this Gengar Mimikyu. 
And from here, I think we're in a good spot, guys, because these Mimikyu's really don't do anything to us, and we haven't really seen any other attackers that look like th they would be an issue. Now, if they play something like Dawnlings Necrozma and Beast Rings or something like that, that could be an issue, but I really don't know what single attachment, like Psychic Attacker, that could be annoying. They could play the Nihilego from Lost Thunder. That is a possibility. It's just a single attachment Psychic Attacker. Um, if they play Unit Energies, that could also open up some different plays for them. But here, oh, going for the Pseudo Widow. That's not a card we're used to seeing, but... So we do have to give up an energy. Kind of annoying, but... Guys, I think we actually just have game in hand because we can attach Guzma up this Gengar Mimikyu, and that's going to be game. So they're going to need something else, like a Judge or something, to disrupt our hand. So if they don't have anything like that or a peeking red card, uh, you know, we just kind of win here. Okay, so we're just going to see a Filch. So Raichu is going to be able to... Uh, take a knockout here on this Gengar Mimikyu. So here we'll attach to Pikachu, evolve into Raichu GX, and then we can just Guzma this Gengar Mimikyu and take our last knockout. So that's pretty nice only having to take two knockouts to win the game uh, here with this Raichu deck. So yeah, we're going to do a whopping 290 to, to poor Gengar Mimikyu and take the game. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at Raichu GX. I am a big fan of Raichu, and I've always had a soft spot for Raichu GX. Uh, you know, who knows, maybe it, it's better positioned now in the metagame, now that we have these new cards for the archetype. But at, if nothing else, it's definitely substantially better than it used to be prior to Team Up. But of course, guys, if you did enjoy this content, feel free to like and subscribe, and consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg, or by picking up some merch from our online store at rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.